I was excited to be here today. I couldn't wait. There were some powerful prayers this morning. Um, it's good to be standing back here again. Uh, I love this family. I love you all. I love my family. I have some family and friends here too, and my mother and my wife. Um, I would not be standing here today if it weren't the victorious power of Jesus Christ. My wife and I would not be here today for the past five years, six years. We've gone through some of the darkest times of our life. But God is awesome. And I want to share a little bit of that today. Some of you may know. If you don't, you can come talk to me after. But God is awesome. God restores. We serve a God that restores. We serve a God that heals. We serve a God that rebuilds and can use you again. Praise God. Praise God. When Pastor approached me and said, do you want to speak? And I said, are you going to be there? <laughs> he said, no, but I'll be watching. I said, man, you are working on faith, aren't you? <laughs> Praise God. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for all you who are joining us online. I have a message today for, for if you don't know Jesus Christ, the uns, for the unsaved, and also for the church. And so if uh, you would allow me, we'll take a little journey. We're going to go from dark to light. I love the worship that we had this morning. Powerful, the powerful prayers. God set us up. God always plans the service just like he wants it. And so uh, I want to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, by your mercy, I offer myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. And I choose no longer to conform to this world, but I choose to be transformed by the renewing of my mind that I may prove what is your good and acceptable, perfect will, Lord God. I pray right now for all of us, for your people, that you would set us free, that you would cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ, that you would anoint us with the Holy Spirit, that you would save, heal, and deliver, and transform individuals and families today, Lord God, all those who are in sound of my voice. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the power of your might. Father, and I ask that you preach your gospel through me today. In Jesus' name, amen. I stood here in August 2014 after my wife and I were led back here to Pastor Larry's church. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that Pastor Larry and the, the, the pastoral team here are gospel-believing ministers and believers, and they guard that and protect that in their heart. The only truth is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is what you will hear here all the time from Pastor Larry, from our pastors. My, my, my past, the, the pastoral staff here are, are incredible. And they've supported me and my family and, and my wife and I in amazing ways. And uh, I thank you, brothers. I thank you, brothers and, and your wives. Um, do you, the last time I was here, I spoke of uh, the, being aware of the powers of darkness you'll begin to see how ironic that is. <laughs> but I also mentioned that Jesus Christ is coming soon. And we know that. Do you believe that? And I said, I asked, do you believe he's coming within the next 10 years, within the next five years? And I said, if that's so, the Antichrist would have already been born. And that was in 2014. The world has taken a flip since then. And the powers of darkness are out there. But Brother Joey, thank you for your prayer. Because we stand in the power of God, no matter what the enemy is doing. Brothers and sisters, we are in a war. You are under attack. Your mind, your body, your spirit, your children, your family, all everything that you value, everything that you hold dear, everything that matters and means something, it's under attack, but thank God the weapons that are used against us will not prevail. 
And we're going to look into that. I want to open up with the scripture. Um, I want us to be awake. Not woke. Awake. Awake and vigilant and aware of what God is doing in our lives and in the world. Okay? We are awake. The word says, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead and Christ will shine on you. And we'll look at that scripture here in a little bit. But I, first, I want to start with 1 Peter 2, 9 through 11. I'm going to use the NLT version. Um, I may quote from the King James. I read in the King James a lot, but uh, just bear with me. I like the NLT and what it, uh, how it um, explains some things. So 1 Peter 2, 9 through 11. And we'll start. And I believe we have it. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you, as temporary residents and foreigners... To keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Powerful. I'm going to just let the word speak to us today. I want to, I have a few scriptures here to start, so bear with me. Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. I want to look here. I love the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like anyone else everyone else but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead it is only by God's grace that you have been saved for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. I have to use my cheater sheets. I'm not as uh, technically savvy as some of you all with your tablets and cell phones, okay? Colossians 2, uh, 1, verse 9 through 14. Colossians 1, 9 through 14. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and re transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave us our sins. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit? Here, here, I'm going to start in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Thank you, sister, for keeping that. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. I want us to just let the word minister to us and hear what it's saying. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. This is the word of God, okay? Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality 
or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that. King James says, and such were some of you. But you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Praise God. Praise God. What were you? Think about that. Where were you when God found you? Where was your life? I was a wretch. I was a mess. My mother will tell you. She saw the dark, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and it got ugly. Let me tell you. What were you? See, these scriptures are the gospel. Transforms lot. It transforms lives. It takes you from darkness to light. You were living one way, and then you're living another way. You're not doing the things you once were. Now you're doing something else. People are looking at you, and they're like, what is wrong? What happened? What is different? What became of you? I met Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what happened. He washed me and cleansed me of all the drugs, everything else, all the sin. Praise God. Praise God. I want to look, there was a theme, darkness to light. And I want to look at that. We're going to go into the darkness, and then we're going to go into the light. Okay, so if you permit me that, we're going to look at a few things. See, the power of darkness is lies. Secrecy and deception. Leading to bondage. Ultimately, chaos and death. And that can happen on many levels. Do you feel the rumbling in our world? Do you know God said in the last days he will shake everything. And he would even start to shake the church. And I think we've seen that. You feel the rumbling. Do you feel the atmosphere? Do you feel the heaviness? There is fear out there, but we don't need to be afraid. The war is raging, but we are going to win. The power of light is truth, transparency, and revelation leading to freedom, peace, and life. We look at the state of the world and we wonder, what can we do? Where are we at? Where do we reach for help? People don't have hope. You see the pictures and the images and the, and the videos online and everywhere and you're, people running when one day they're going to work and going home to a nice dinner and bed and then the next a missile comes and blows up their whole building. Suddenly how life can change. But we must hold on to God. How real is this darkness? How real is this darkness? Some of the things are so blatant and yet some of the things are so subtle. Some of you men need to make our, our, our men's Bible study. Brother Rick does an awesome job Wednesday facilitating that and leading that group. And we get into some pretty heavy discussions. <laughs> and we all still love each other. <laughs> but it is awesome. And, and, and we bring up some of the issues that are going on in the world. You know, the... Darkness manifests its way in so many different ways. I don't know if you knew, but just recently over the Valentine's Day weekend, the Satanic Temple held a revival meeting for all Satanists across the world and the country to join in Arizona to celebrate Satanism. And they were just granted the freedom to do after-school programs in the schools. blatant what do we do we pray and we believe we still stand for God see some things are so blatant when we're attacked it's easy to see 
it's easy to know and to recognize an attack when it's blunt, blunt force, hit, bruises, whatever, what have you, something blatant like that. But what about the subtle? Sometimes we don't even realize we're being abused, manipulated, controlled. The secret sources behind this evil in the world is behind politics, social structure, religion, comes with corruption, unrest, oppression. Have you ever hurt anyone? Because it also not only affects on this macro level, it also affects us personally. This darkness. Evil hurts people. Causes damage, pain and suffering, destruction and chaos. See, I, I look out and I see, you know, we all live our lives wanting to make informed, responsible decisions for our family, for our future, for our finances, our career. We want to take the pr appropriate steps. We want to be informed. But what happens if we make decisions on disinformation? We're misinformed. We have to take responsibility, gain education, research, communication. We need to get informed. This book is the only thing that's going to tell you the truth. This book is the only thing that's going to be your GPS when everything goes out. This will guide your life. This will lead you. This will bring the healing and the deliverance and the power for your household. We cannot trust all the times, the news, the media, what happens when the science is failing, <laughs> the data, the banks, the financial systems, the medical systems, the government systems, the social systems, and we put our trust in them. I worked in those systems at the state level, and I saw the breakdown. And I would even say I saw the corruption coming in. I worked for some of the system in 2007, and I saw, I saw, I saw some things that were not going the right direction. <laughs> when we can't trust the world, there's no truth in the world. We have to realize that. The greatest decision we could make is to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we start from there. See, we must be cautious where we look for guidance. The self-help books are flying off the shelves at the bookstore. The meditation, the rituals, the practices are flying off <laughs> the books. Are, 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 you know, all these, this research and everything that's going on. Christian, we don't look to tarot cards. We don't look to the horoscope. We don't look to the stars. I pray you're not using sage in your house. My wife and I have gone to pray for houses, house cleanings, house blessings. And you feel those things leave. But, oh, and I, brother, I brought, I brought sage, and I did this, and I did that. I'm going, Why? <laughs> You need the blood of Jesus. You need the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You need to invite him into your family, into your house, and all those things will stop and go away. And in your life, we don't use crystals, candles. These things are lies from the enemy. They're lies. And Satan lies, and we know that. 
there's some foundation we have to understand about these powers of darkness and, and the state in the, uh, of the atmosphere and the world that we live in. Genesis 3 tells us that we understand the consequences of the choices of Adam and Eve resulted in a cursed world. They resulted in a cursed world. This curse was from God because of our choice. We are under the bondage of death. And I wonder if we actually realize that. Some have described it as death row. Because what is going to save us? Romans 12, 9, and I, you don't have this one, sister, but I'm just going to reference it. The great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels, who deceives the whole world. We see we have an enemy. He was there in the garden. Man was deceived, and then man chose. I don't know if we've ever realized that. He beguiled Eve, and then Adam chose. <laughs> wow, you know. What do we understand about the enemy? He is a liar, the god of this world. He has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The devil has this world enchanted under a satanic spell. He, he appears as an angel of light. There's a web of his delusion wrapping itself around the world. The world is being lied to. So I hope we understand this. If we choose to live on the foundations and the principles of this world, in this world, we're being disinformed. There's disinformation. It's all fake news. Because the only true and real news is in this book, the Word of God. So we have to center ourselves and find ourselves in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. The world is being lied to, deceived. I believed the lie. We see the lie in Luke. Four, Matthew 4, both of those, the temptations of Jesus Christ. And what did he say? All this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. You want power, glory, riches, materialism, prestige, reputation. We hear the stories out of Hollywood the singers, the everything, you know, oh, I had to sell my soul to Satan just to be popular. <laughs> it's real, folks. It's real. There's a phrase circulating around the big lie. It's called the big lie today, this phrase, the big lie, whatever it is out there, everyone's using it. So I looked this up in the big lie, and I was surprised at what I saw, what I found. The big lie definition is a gross distortion or misrepre misrepre misrepresentation of the truth used especially as a propaganda technique. The German expression was cloned. The big lie, the German expression was cloned, and I didn't know how to pronounce the German by Adolf Hitler when he dictated his 1925 book, Mein Kampf, My Struggle, to describe the use of a lie so colossal that no one, believe, no one would believe that someone could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. That's our enemy. He can distort the truth. What we learn from Genesis 3 is that Satan says, here's his big lie. You got this. 
You don't need God. You can establish an identity outside your, of him. You are a self-made person. It isn't that bad. I'm only hurting, you know, you're, you only hurt yourself. It's okay. No one else. These are just lies in the secrets, in the shadows. The reality is that the curse and having an enemy manifest in our world through the spiritual warfare. I just see, I don't know who, quote, who started this phrase. The first, casualty, the first casualty in war is the truth. A war always includes propaganda, fake news, and disinformation. Okay? But no weapon forged against us shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. This means, yes, the enemy does have weapons, but God will help us. But it also means that these weapons can cause damage. As I said, he is a liar, God of this world. He's blinded the minds of unbelievers. What are some of these weapons? And this is where I really want to minister to some of the church and some of the people here, whoever you are. Because lots of times we don't even know how to respond in our lives. We see God moving. We come to church. We're sitting here and the people are praising and worshiping and the singing and the praying and, and all this stuff. And sometimes we're just weighted down. We're heavy. We're trying to enter in. We're wondering what's going on. There's trauma in our life. Tragedy is struck. There's been crisis after crisis. Satan uses these things. These are weapons. What about failure? You ever failed? Man, I failed bad sometimes. And I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. Discouragement. What about unworthiness? Are you free? From the scars of the past. I work with some guys that, you know, and I, a lot, of, I been around a lot of guys that have a lot of tattoos and stuff and everything. And I used to sing for heavy metal. Well, I wouldn't sing, I vocalized for a heavy metal band. <laughs> it's not really singing. That's why I don't ever really sing here. <laughs> but I've seen some of the most wicked tattoos. Guys with all their faces tatted, their arms, their everything. And I talked to this individual at work, and he has goat skulls and demons and 666, all this stuff all over him. And he has family that goes to the local church here. And I've talked to him. I he knows about my conversion. He knows about God. He knew me back then when I was young and crazy. And he's, he's always asking me questions because he's not ready to give his life yet. But I'm always, hey, Jesus loves you, man. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I would like to have faith, but I got all of this on me. I can't even go and apply for housing. I can't do this because as soon as they see me, they just. <sighs> he's been in prison. He's this or that. And I'm, low, I'm going, you know, give your life over to God and he will straighten some of these things out. Yeah, I know, I hear you, I know, I know, I know, I got to do that. <laughs> you ever been there talking to somebody about God and they're just like, what about the scars we can't see? What about the things we can't see? Sometimes the people of God, we're not aware. You know? If we're, you know, are we free? Some of the biggest strongholds are shame, guilt, embarrassment. And we don't know how to deal with those things. Those things are powerful, let me tell you. They will lock you in a room 
laying fetal on your bed in the darkness, going, I, I don't know what to do anymore. I've been there. So when these things happen, you know, they, they come about. Yes, we've sinned. We have a past. Can a Christian sin? Of course. We can really get ourselves messed up when we don't fully surrender our will. I love the analogy about who's sitting on the throne because I'm going to really get there dark. We're going to look at some of that. Okay? Because self-righteous pride. What about self-righteous pride? What hides behind that? We don't realize that. We don't even see that sometimes. You know what hides behind that? Denial. I'm a child of God. I lead my house. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, do, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Like who, you know, whoever else. Oh, I've slipped up. I'm only human. I've done this. I've done that. But I, I'm, I'm busy. Pastor depends on me. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But brother, you were kind of rude one day. Nah, they just don't know how to take me. But brother, what, what happened? I heard a, just a testimony the other day about a sister coming from church or coming to church uh, here last Sunday. She, you know, and, and pulls up behind this guy who stops, slows to a stop at the yellow light. And she's infuriated, infuriated because she's on her way church okay <laughs> she's mad because even though he could have beaten the the light she has to wait and the sister's furious honking her horn screaming in frustration as she missed her her chance to get through the intersection dropping her cell phone and makeup as she was still in the mid rant she heard a tap on the window, looked up, found a police officer seriously looking at her. The officer ordered, a, praise God for our Pueblo Police Department, praise God, these are awesome. <laughs> the officer ordered her to exit her car with her hands up. <clears throat> he took her to the police station where she was searched, fingerprinted, photographed, and placed in a holding cell. After a couple of hours, a policeman approached the cell and opened the door. She was escorted back to the booking desk where the arresting officer was waiting with her personal effects. He said, I'm very sorry for the mistake. You see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn, flipping off the guy in front of you, and causing a cur cursing a blue streak at him. I noticed the what would Jesus do bumper sticker the choose life license plate holder, the follow me to Sunday school bumper sticker, and the chrome plated Christian fish emblem on the truck, on the trunk, sorry. So naturally, I assumed the car was stolen. <clears throat> Pastor Larry, my jokes are better than yours. <laughs> I know he's watching. That was a joke. There was no sister fooled over. Sorry. <laughs> you are all wondering who was that. I was, that was Sister Diane, I know. No, <laughs> she's always doing that. No, just kidding. <laughs> praise God. We can have fun in church. I know I'm very serious at times, but praise God. Can Christians sin? Yes. Can we really blow it? Yes. And God wants, uh, God wants us to realize something. When we look at Israel's history, Amos 8.11 shows us the consequences of Israel's pride and arrogance. There was a famine that came in the land, and it wasn't a famine of food. Do you know what it was? A famine of the word. If we're not careful, we can become an anorexic and bulimic people of people that do not or cannot feed themselves of God's word. You know what happens when we don't know the word? 
Discipleship suffers. And we are not equipped or equipping new converts. Anorexia nervosus, lack or loss of appetite for food as a medical condition, an emotional disorder characterized by an abusive desire to lose weight by refusing to eat. Bulimia, an emotional disorder involving distortion of body image and an obsessive desire to lose weight in which bouts of extreme overeating are followed by depression and self-induced vomiting, purging, or fasting. An eating disorder in which a large quantity of food is consumed in a short period of time, often followed by feelings of guilt or shame. Let me apply this spiritually. Our emotions are all messed up. Fear, anxiety, panic attack is running rampant. I've talked to doctors. I see the research. More and more anxiety and depression is going, it's rising throughout, the, across the board, church or no church, in the people. We suffer from a worldly image of ourselves when we do not focus on the image of God we are made in. We are left to define our own selves. We are left with a distortion. We have a church culture in the West that loves luxury, popularity, self-made prosperity, comfort, ease, please, like me complex, don't offend me complex, and a personal uh, a per, a persecution complex. They didn't like me just because I wore my Christian shirt. <sighs> We have brothers and sisters that are dying for standing for Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. What are we consuming in this world? We binge on junk food. Then we purge it all at the altar when we feel guilty and bad and, we're only, and we only feast on what makes us feel good. We don't talk a lot about the third soil ground in the, in the parable of those that get choked out or worried about the cares of this world or get when problems and stuff happen. Because those people look like sometimes they have it all together. But behind the wall, behind the mask, everything's falling apart. And God is saying, you can't have revival like that. <laughs> you can't feed on truth in the world. The troughs of this world feed pigs. <laughs> in looking at the will of man, we can gain some understanding in how we get into these messes. John 1, 4 through 3. I believe we have that. I don't know if I gave you that one, sister. Um... The word gave life to everything that we created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not that light. He was a simple, simply a witness to tell about the light, the one who is the true light. He gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. John three eighteen through 21. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed but those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants remember surrender your will to God do you trust God with your life we're created and given the freedom of choice. I have the freedom of choice. 
Satan tries to take the freedom of choice from us. And my problem isn't your freedom of choice of what you're going to do with you or anything like that, whatever you want to choose. It's, are you willing to accept the consequences of your choice? You know, do you want to hurt someone? Do you want to commit murder? Do you want to choices? We're going to look at our choices. Looking at my time here. We do not come here for a social gathering, even though it is, there's a social aspect of it. We're not robots, brothers and sisters, mindless automatons. We are not brainwashed, coaxed or mind-controlled into being followers of Jesus Christ. We choose, because of what he's done, I freely and willingly say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I want you to control my life. I don't want to be in control. I don't want to be on the throne. We must, not, we must be careful not to fall into cults of personality. We don't have an identity in this world. We do not get wrapped into the us and them game, stigmatizing, destabilizing, segregating, culture, canceling culture. The kingdom does not have disparities. All I care about is the, sa the, the saved and the lost. Pastor Larry hit it right on the head when, when he was telling us about desire and looking for a definition of desire. And God gave him the will. I would like to contrast that a little of what he talked about because he went on the will. Today we've looked at the will of God, the will of Satan, and the will of man. We're going to go a little deeper what does the manifestation of living out of our own free will look like in this world? 1 Samuel 15, 3. When God rejected Saul as king. 1 Samuel 15, 3. The word says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Wow. Wow. When we look at the world, we see a Babylonian system, and we look at the end times and the, and the, and the history of the system. They did not repent of their witchcraft and sorcery. Nahum 3 4. All this because Nineveh, the beautiful and faithless city, mistress of deadly charms, enticed the nations with her beauty. She taught them all her magic, enchanting people everywhere. Revelations 18.23. I don't know if we have some of these. I apologize if I go too fast. <laughs> I have a lot of information. <laughs> talks, about, talks about the Babylonian system not repenting of their sorceries. Do you realize the root of sorcery is pharmakia? Yep. There's a sorcery spreading over the world. Deceiving the nations. Revelations 21 through 3 says the devil deceived the nations. Something from my past, when I was involved with the cult and some of the things... There was one primary law. And it's written in the Satanic Bible. Founded by Aleister Crowley, who influenced Anton LaVey to write that. And their primary law is, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Do what you want to do. Whatever feels good, do it. Whatever you want, it's all about you. It's all about you. You are the center of the world. You are the center. You are your own God. Wow. When we choose to live our life our way, things can really go south quick. 
I trust we've all made sober, conscious, free will decisions to follow Jesus Christ. And if you're not saved and you're here, I pray and beseech you that you give your life to God. Amen. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, what is it worth your soul? What is it worth your soul? Let's look the deeds of the flesh and spiritual wickedness in these last times. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Wow. We see the lawlessness spreading across our land. Those without the Spirit of God cannot grasp the things of God. Romans 8. 5 through 8, we can see that. The carnal mind, our nature, cannot accept the spiritual, supernatural power. It's time we start getting a global, world supernatural view of what God is doing. I think we saw the world shrink in 2020 when something swept across the world like we've never saw before. And we saw, and all of a sudden, we were aware of what was happening in Australia in South America, in Africa, in Europe, all over the world. Kind of gives different meaning when it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We saw the world shrink all of a sudden, come under an attack. And what's happening? 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have had a spiritual vision or revelation or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God claiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know what is holding him back? For he can be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way then the man of lawlessness will be revealed but the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles he will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. Brothers and sisters, we are entering a time where the truth, you have to seek the truth because it's going to be more deceptive, a climate and an atmosphere that is more deceiving and wondering and searching for what is actually truth out there. If you don't know what the truth is, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life today. And I want you to know that. He's where we start. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Does the blood of Jesus cleanse all sin? Or just some. Society could be unforgiving. But God, if you deal with God appropriately and right. See, God's will is that everyone would come to repentance. 
the will of Jesus is that everyone would come to repent. In 2 Timothy 3.9, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Repentance is the only way to revival. That's it. <clears throat> the more we seek him, the more we turn from our past, the more we turn and allow God to have his full weight in our lives. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Praise God. God is on your side. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. We're called according to his purpose. Praise God. We see Jesus in Mark 12, 29, 31. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel. The Lord our God is the one and only God. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. That means your emotions. Do we talk about emotional health enough? With all your soul, your being, with all your mind, do we talk about mental health enough? And all your strength, your body, your being. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. We see Luke, uh, Jesus in Luke twenty two forty two, And I'm trying to get here to wrap this up. I have some testimony I want to share. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will done, not mine. Amen. Hebrews 10, 5 through 10. This is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will. O oh God, as it is written about me in the scriptures. First Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law. You know, religion is not going to save you. No matter how good you look doing it in the right suit and the right clothes and you know I'm doing this I'm doing that surrendering your will to God first Christ said you did not want animal sacrifices and or sin offerings or burnt offerings let me jump down to nine then he said look I have come to do your will he cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect for God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. We must break the stronghold of lies the enemy has injected within the hearts and spirits of the people of God. Religion is not from God. Okay? The enemy is out to still kill and destroy. And you know what he's out to still kill and destroy? Your testimony of glory to God, of what God has done in your life. Because you are not a failure. You are not unworthy. You are not too far gone. Yes, there is hurt. You believe the lies. Yes, you have scars. Yes, there's baggage. Yes, there was damage. But... God can restore and heal. Yes, trust has been lost. What has happened to you? And I want you to understand this, brothers and sisters. Whatever you've experienced in your life, whatever has happened to you, has not devalued you. It has not devalued you. God loves you and wants you to come to him. I don't care what you've done. I stood here five years ago, six years ago, well, what, 2014? <laughs> I don't know. Preaching against the powers of darkness. 
into ministry. I was a young punk. I lived a sex, drugs, rock and roll lifestyle. And I, I lived it. And then I got saved radically. But I made one mistake. I wasn't smoking, drinking, cussing, carousing, all the stuff that I used to do. and Started to try to be a dad. Went to school, graduated college, entered into the workforce, a new career. Got married, thought I had everything going, and I made one mistake. I started working at the state level, rubbing elbows in meetings with some big people, and I made one mistake. You know what it was? God, I got this. <clears throat> and you know what happened? Almost, actually, I lost it all. Because I sat on the throne and I started to pray, play religion and I started to say, God, I got this. My will, I'm good now. I'm good. I'm better. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. And the worst day of my life, I, and I'm, I'm aware of your time. I thank you, brothers and sisters. When I had to go home to my wife, wait for her to come home and tell her that I lost my job because I was looking at pornography at work. Do you know the devastation? I'll never forget the look in her face. you know one of the first things she and, and this is from since the beginning of the year Pastor Larry's been talking about desire one of the first things she said was don't you desire me anymore weren't you and I, it just I was a man of God I was preaching I was doing things I had come yeah I had a past yeah I was doing this yeah I was doing that and everything else and the one thing that I did not realize is the educational, the understanding that I had to gain about what was going on. Everything about pornography is a lie. Everything. Trust was broken. Family was betrayed, embarrassed, friends. I, w I hung my head. I didn't even know what to do. How do, you, what do you, how do you go on from there? When I took the will and sat on, and I told God, I got this. God is awesome. He loves you. It's not feeling sorry for you. God loves you. Amen. And his love is also correcting and restoring. And anyone here today, and I'm, I've spoke to, I, I cut some of this message, I've spoke to uh, unsaved and Christians. I had to go. I came in, fell on the floor of Pastor Larry's house, snot, tears, everything all over the floor collapsed. The pastoral staff around me. A man that thought he was doing good. <laughs> wow. Secrets, lies. I tell you, brothers and sisters, if there's anything in your life that you think is a secret, God already knows. If 
you're doing something. And also, lots of times we don't know how to respond to trauma and things that were done to us, and we don't want people to know and the transparency in it. It hurts to be vulnerable because we think, oh, well, God doesn't understand that how I was hurt, and I can't share that. Satan wants to keep you there because he could, God was the enemy meant for bad, for harm. God can turn around and use for good in someone else's life. And God can heal you and set you free from that. <clears throat> I want us to stand today. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> That's the first time I've shared some of that public. <clears throat> If you're online, I'm watching, if you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, or you've heard a word I've said that if you're hurting, if you're lost, or if you've done some things, God loves you and he will transform your life. I want us just to examine ourselves. I want us to look inside because God will strip you from everything. And if there's something you're holding on to the world, you, you know, one of the things, she, she walked out the door because it was her choice and she had the right to do that. You have the right to, re to leave if something's going on that you don't feel safe, that you feel betrayed, that you feel no trust. And she came back. With the help of Pastor Larry and others, I feel bad because she was alone through a lot of this. And she's still going through some of it. We're going on 17 years of marriage. <laughs> God heals people. God heals. Come from darkness to light. Let Christ's light shine upon you. Let him come in and just and open up all to him and say, Lord, I don't want it. None of it is worth it. I was faced with Well, you know, is, 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 is an earthly relationship worth losing my own soul? And I could have lied. I could have covered it up. I could have made every excuse. I could have. And God says, you're going to deal with me. <laughs> I owe it to her to be a man of God. I owe it to my grandkids. I owe it to my family. I owe it to be a son, a husband, a father, a community member. Wow, sin hurts and damages. If you're struggling with things, bring it to God. The altars are open if you want to pray. Or you can just deal with God there where you're at. God wants to heal and set people free. I've prayed in this sanctuary Wednesdays and said, God, transform, save, heal, and deliver families and individuals from addiction, from drugs, from hurts, from trauma, from crisis. From we can't go just living crisis to crisis. We are more than conquerors. God gives us the victory. We need to start just living in that. No more scars, no more pain. And allowing God to use those things in other people to heal and help others. Pray for us. My wife and I have, God has done some amazing things and taken us places that we didn't think we'd really be ministering to some people that, especially in that subject. And it's not just men, it's men and women. <laughs> it's men and women. Satan has lied to us enough. I want to pray. 
You can come down here and pray. If not, pray with God. Get alone with God. But I want to pray for you, for us. Father God, I pray against the lies of the enemy. I pray deliverance, Father God, for those who are hurt, heavy burdened, carrying things, Father, that they're tired of carrying any, carrying, carrying anymore. Father God, I pray that the blood of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would begin to move and soothe and go into their lives and those areas of their lives in their mind and begin to heal and set free, Lord God, from the past, from things they've done, things that have been done to them. Father, touch them. I pray, Father, for the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ to be on your people, that we rise up, Lord God. Father, that we are equipped to preach your gospel, that, God, you lose, use our lives for your kingdom and glory. We surrender to you, Lord. I surrender to you. Father, touch people here. Touch people here dealing with addiction, dealing with shame, hurt. Father, use them. Let them know you're not done with them. Let them know you have a plan for their life and a future. Let them know, Lord God, that there's freedom. Father God, let your gospel power go forth throughout this building and throughout online for all who are listening. And Father God, begin to break strongholds in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Satan, I cast out your lies. I cast out your deception. I cast out your... Your, your weapons, Father, that you've attacked God's people with and are attacking people with. In the name of Jesus, we stand on the word of God. We have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Joey.